So crew for hire. We've been working on that one a while. <laughs> do you remember when we first put that together? I do not. I remember going to a convention with you and you having a prototype. That was, it was either 2015 or 2016. I'm pretty sure it was one of those. It's five or six years now from the very first iteration. We do uh, material. That would have been 2016. That's 2016. Then yeah, we've been working on it since. Because it was, it was that following year that we jumped into material. So, so yeah, it's, uh, that one's been on a long journey and I have been thinking about it a lot. And since we're on our way away from 2020 now, and <laughs> at least halfway through 2021, um, I've I've been feeling a lot more motivated. I've been feeling a lot more, uh, a lot more like myself again. That got me thinking about games and kind of the the state of brass engine games. And I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight with you. I'm really worried about the sellability of Crew for Hire. I know we originally designed it as a steampunk game, and and it was kind of Firefly esque, but with our own sort of pulp. Adventure twist to it. I, I was looking at trends and for the past five years <laughs> that we've been working on this game, steampunk has been down, 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 less and less. And, and even though we have like this, we have, we asked for people's likenesses and mm -hmm. stuff. And we, we were, I know we were going for like a community angle around it. And, and honestly, it just seems like we're going to run into a lot of a lot of unforeseen issues well, with with using with using people we know. Well, not only that, but with the lost engines last year, it really seems like most. So so all in all, like I you know I know we did the math before to to make this game with the components that we were talking about and get it printed. Like we're we're, we're looking at twenty five thirty thousand dollars, and um, we've never run a Kickstarter that big. No. <laughs> so, I mean, there's there's companies that run Kickstarters that are like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we're we're not those guys. So so I was thinking, what if we take the mechanics that we worked on with the Crew for Hire because we know it works, mm -hmm. people play it, people have fun with it, and and it's just a system. What if we take that system and just put a different skin on it that we know is going to be more sellable, like like or more uh, more accessible to a wider audience that will look at it and go, yeah, okay, I've heard of that thing. You know, let let's let's get into it, you Can know, I give it a face look. Yeah, I'm down. So I, I had I had two ideas. Mm -hmm. um, one being straight up science fiction, aliens, spaceships, and a galaxy instead of just the world locations to fly around and um, and being different kind of alien species all trying to accomplish missions. Basically the same game, just just uh, aliens and ships. And then my other idea was cyberpunk, where it could all still be Earth, but it's not a steampunk earth, it's a cyberpunk earth. And and then we try to figure out how to translate all of our steampunk elements into cyberpunk elements. <clears throat> um, it, maybe it's just me, and it seems like a lot of times we're walking, I see a lot of sci-fi spacey stuff, and just kind of, that one I would I would put as, I, I don't I don't see that catching a lot of people's attention. White noise. Um, I do like the cyberpunk. Uh, and I know at one time we talked about doing like a convention kind of game, but again, with the loss of convention, it feels like almost more sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe maybe people will be like, "Oh, I'm missing conventions so much. Let me play a board game about conventions." Right. <laughs> but so, cyberpunk seems cool, uh, and I mean, it's still got the punk aspect uh, as far as you know, cyber just turning. I mean, technically, cyberpunk came before steampunk anyway. I didn't know uh, yeah, it's cyberpunk was a literary genre way before steampunk was, and it it kind of feels like cyberpunk is still sort of in the, the pop culture mind hive mind, you know? Oh, yeah, they're still we, making we, video games. Yeah. 2077 yeah. just came out right. last year, and um, Blade Runner 2049 isn't exactly. that old. No. Um, Alita Battle Angel isn't that old, and they're talking about a sequel. You know, there's I I, I feel I feel like people would know what cyberpunk is and maybe look at it and go, yeah, okay, that makes. I mean, but and you can say that about cyberpunk, but as far as steampunk, you can't really. Mortal Engines is that uh, more cyberpunk? Would you say? Or Mortal Engines is like it's like steam and diesel had a baby. <laughs> Fair. Because because it's really it's really neither. It, it's it is dystopian. So it's mm. not really steampunk because steampunk kind of steampunk kind of like ori originally was utopian, and then of course other people got a hold of it and like darker and uh, and, and did that. But uh, Mortal Engines is like more like diesel punk because it's it's got that everything runs on gas and and sense. fossil fuels and and you have a lot of you do have a lot of machinery, but it's not really like clockworks. It's it's more That's like kind of why I was engines. Like it's not quite well, steampunk. engines. <laughs> yeah, it's engines, engines literally engines. engines. 
So, okay, so let's say, you know, you said, you know, those two universes kind of made a baby. What if we did where we took, like, our the convention lifestyle where you've got people clicks and, and followings um, going to different conventions all over the place to try to do all this stuff, but we merge that sci-fi future. So it's like that are going to conventions, tasks, and jobs, and, and they're trying to become like this, I don't know if we want to make it like some kind of social media aspect or just some kind of like, just like ultimate con, so many tasks have gotten so many recommendations from like and met so many celebrities and whatnot that uh, that we can just uh, and we'll we'll have them fly around and like you know kind of like Futurama style you know where they're just like do, 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 and going all over and you know you know some of them are going to uh, you know states we've got several spots in the states we've got UK we've got uh, Asia Australia just have them going all over the map and meeting all these different celebrities and, and trying to pinpoint the ultimate con experience and gaining the the reputation would allow them to so it's like it's like going around and doing things at cons so that you can get bragging rights yeah yeah and or like followers on like youtube right. or instagram or something you know just yeah okay yeah i mean that's I, I gotta be honest that's a really weird thing to wrap my head around <laughs> <laughs> like conventions but futurama style right okay um yeah that, that would be that would be really interesting However, you remember me and Mario were at a convention together that was kind of boring. So yeah. we, we ended up we ended up talking a lot because there was nothing else to do, mm. and and we ended up we ended up talking a lot about a board game about convention mm. and and the experience that you get there. And it was um, it was a little bit like I guess it was like zoomed in on 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 like what you're talking about. So instead of like convention hopping, it was like you're at one convention and trying to to do things at this one convention. But it'd be more like um, <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl style. Okay. Do you, do you know Toe Jam and Earl? I vaguely remember that. I, I remember Toe Jam and Earl and then Earthworm Jim. And <laughs> <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl was a second game where you move through levels and you're like trying to avoid all these crazy kooky characters and trying to collect up parts for for your spaceship so that you can escape um and it was and it, it, it was kind of like that concept where you know you'd have to deal with con security um and you'd yeah. have to deal with uh photographers and and uh and cosplayers and and you're just an attendee trying to like collect pieces to a certain thing that's like that's like the ultimate collectible or something Ooh, and we could make the so thing. sorry go ahead um no no you, you go well i was just thinking it's like one of the detriments you know one of the things you have to avoid is like con crew. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, make sure make sure you got a mask. Yeah. <laughs> a mask will save you from Conqueror. Um No, but it was we, we we talked about it, and it was it was a really cool idea, and it wasn't anything that anybody had made before. And I I really appreciate the uh, being able to follow the tropes of a convention and follow the humor of those of those tropes and stereotypes. Whereas the broader kind of convention hopping around the world is like it's a it's a good allegory to what Crew for Hire did functionally, but you kind of miss out on on the uh, on the humor of the tropes, you know, because like you could pick up a job card and it could say, you know, oh, you meet, you know, um, security, yeah, meet such celebrity, you know, like like we we could do a play on names, like instead of Alan Tudyk, it could be Alec Tulin Tudin, mm -hmm. <laughs> Alec, Alec Tudin. Um, and and uh, and and that's all the job card would be is that you meet that celebrity and you roll the dice for your skill um, to to make sure that it's successful and success and failure can have each their own little funny blurb or whatever. But but like but if you zoom in on that experience, um, then then you could have lots of crazy outcomes and and more than more than just like one sentence here or there. Sure. I don't know. I see I see a lot of potential with the comic book convention board game that we could save as its own thing with its own mechanics to to really serve serve that. That concept well well before we put it on the back burner just curious so if we did it on the map style where we're at now so would we make different points on the map like different booths and sections of the convention potentially it it, it doesn't have to be driven by locations even okay. it, it could be um it could be story driven uh and and just like you know i mean yeah we could we could have a map but maybe not as complex as crew for hire maybe it's just a row like a few rows of like vendor booths and celebrity row like a grid because mm -hmm. That's how conventions set it up anyway. Right. And and then being able to either move through that or it's or the board just represents your progress getting to where you need to be. And then it's all about the, the card play and your own tableau of things to sort of build up your experience as okay. opposed to it doesn't have to be about physical movement. It can just be about the experience. Well, and that is one con is 
getting <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a really good point uh getting stuck in line and stuff like that that's that is a really good point I, th I think there's a lot more exploring we can do with that concept so for crew for hire i think i think it does boil down to science fiction or cyberpunk i agree with you i think cyberpunk is a better way to go between the two because the world building of a fictional universe when you include how many how many captains were there six six, six different alien species with potentially more that just exist on each ship um, flying around to 20 different planets and each planet has to have its own history and every job has has to have details like there's there's a lot yeah, to making it just lot. straight up sci uh sci-fi fantasy or sci-fi epic um yeah cy cyberpunk seems a little bit more um easily translatable since yeah, since because like steampunk you have automatons cyberpunk you have artificial intelligence you have dins and crew cyberpunk you have um agents and and like mercenaries and um and um and gangs i guess this means crew for hire is going cyberpunk Agreed. okay now we got to figure out how <laughs>